How's it going everyone? Thank you for tuning back in to my newest video. Today I have the Play Arts Kai Red Variant Batman figure. This is my first time owning or adding a piece of Play Arts or even Square Enix to my collection. And let me tell you, I have never been more excited about a figure for all of its qualities, from the unique design, to the articulation, to just overall, I mean, just the high quality that this figure carries. I was truly surprised at how amazing this figure actually was. I mean, I don't think I've ever had a figure or seen one with this uniqueness. I mean, it truly is a one-of-a-kind piece, and I'm sure all the Play Arts Kai DC figures have these unique qualities to them that make them stand out and make them a top, a top addition to anyone's collection. So before I get started with the actual figure, I'll do a little highlight of the packaging. Let me get that out of the way here, move the accessories. So, as you can see, the main box here, it just says the uh, DC Comics logo, um, variant Play Arts Kai, as it is a variant figure. And at the bottom it shows the Batman limited color version down here. So I'm not quite sure how limited this figure actually is because there is no actual addition or number size on it. I'm not sure if it's just limited as in they make one production run of it and that's it or there is a number they just don't release it but I do know it is sort of hard to find as there have not been many people I've talked to that actually have this figure and it is not that expensive either it's about the same price range as the blue variant version or the other um, DC Comics figures in this line. So then once you open this up, it's just a velcro opening. You can see this is where the figure would be with the uh, white Batman logo, a really cool logo, I love what they did with that. And then over here with the f almost full body Batman and a little description of play arts. So also in this packaging comes an almost like an instruction kit where it has all these different posable features or standing features to actually set up your own uh, base or stand. I know Hot Toys also has these stands and the clamps for it, but I don't believe the one, at least the Hot Toys figures I have, have these instructions or actually require, require you to uh, assemble it such as this. And it also shows you here the different accessories and the hands and how to put them on. You know, not that it's so hard, but I just thought it's really cool that they actually give you this whole instruction packet and all these options for the stand itself. So now let's get on to the figure. And actually, even before I start with the figure, I'll jump into the accessories. <clears throat> Sorry about that. So here we have the grappling gun. If I can get that into focus, there we go. You know, really cool gun. They did a great job on all the little details. It looks like a very high-tech gun, almost like a Mass Effect style gun. I love the little the red fading in here into the black, a little bit of goldish or copper color here, and overall just a black and silver paint coat. Really cool. They did a really good job. And it's not that hard to fit it into his hand, so you know, you don't have to worry about heating it up and loosening up the fingers. Also comes this uh, battering. Let me show you the front here. It's almost like a silverish and dark gray tones to it. It reflects really well in the light, as you can see in the video, depending on the angle. I really love this. It's a great mold, you know, no chips or no little extra pieces hanging off or tags, whatever you want to call those. Really nice mold. And it also comes the hands. It comes with an extra pair of open hands here. And then the figure actually comes out of the package with a pair of closed fists here. The only disappointment I have about this figure is that it comes with only one gripping hand, which is actually on the figure I put on with the sword. Let me take that out to show you as well. Come on. Um, so there is only the one gripping hand, which kind of sucks because he has three accessories, so it would have been cool to have the sword and the battering in each hand, or the sword and grappling gun, or grappling gun battering, you know. For having two closed fists and two open hands, you would think they'd have two gripping hands as well. 
but no worries there at least there is one and you can put one accessory at the minimum and so here's also the sword or katana whatever I'm not exactly sure what sword it is but again with the different silver and gray on the blade with the reflecting light and then the handle the different silvers make that focus and this is a really big sword as you can tell in this position it comes all the way up to his chest even when he's standing it's about to his chest and then here's a ruler as well just to show you guys how big the sword is the sword is about seven inches so that's a really nice size and it's all you know intact a little bit loose but no worries it's not that fragile alright so let's get into the figure so I have him in this pose because it's not a disappointment not an issue it's just kind of awkward when you actually do pose this figure it seems like because the cape itself is so big he'll be leaning he'll have the almost like a top heavy or the back heavy weight um, on his cape and because the cape does extend to the floor and is kind not really dragging but it does go out um, bending back on the floor any position you really put it it's gonna feel like he is leaning on the cape and that's where it is mainly heavy um, not a big issue you know you can still pose him really well and the cape is also articulated which I will get into um, right now so let's go ahead and start with the articulation so the head you can see very nice ball joint you can move him almost any position almost 360 that's a really nice articulated point you know not many figures can move their heads this much so I love that the arm goes all the way around 360 it goes pretty far out and up like that and close in the elbow also can twist twist a little bit depending on the direction and it has the uh, ratchet joint here and the wrists also twist back and forth and the same with this arm you know everything the same there's no really waist articulation down here but there's like an upper abdomen if you want to call it Move that up. so you know you can really get him into any position and it's not tight or not um, locked in so you can really move him around but it does stay in place so it's a secure uh, joint and then the legs as well they twist at the thighs the ratchet joints let him go back and forth it might feel like you're gonna break it but don't worry it's just a tighter ratchet joint there and then double articulation at the knees so the top and then the bottom that one's a little bit tight and then the ankle as well has the ratchet joint so you can move it up and down twist it and the toe or the front half of the foot also twists so you can get better poses from that make sure I didn't miss anything yep and now onto the cape itself the cape does go out just don't let it get locked in with the grappling hooks um, you know you can move it pretty far out that's really cool um, not I don't think any other Batman figure other than the play arts line does have a truly articulated cape like this I thought that's really cool and again you will hear the uh, ratchet joint in the cape so you can stick it more far out or get it closer to him depending on the pose and move his leg so you know any way you really want to pose him so now let's get into the detail of it if I can just get him to stand for a little bit here I'll just go back into his other pose I had him in there we go almost there we go alright so really nice paint job on this I mean it has to be one of my favorite paint apps as well just the gloss and the different paint apps all over the figure here you can see how shiny the helmet or the bat helmet actually is and it seems to be all one mold as this is not it's not a softer rubber it is very nice and you know you can actually feel the smoothness of it and then here on the armor itself too let me get that better in the light so you all can see it you know just a fantastic paint job on this I mean the red it's almost a darker crimson red but then in the light the red and the black because of the gloss paint app it just makes it stand out and makes it so much brighter and I mean it's just a fantastic figure and you can see the red better in the light here on the head 
and then the eyes too having the uh, whitish sonar look. And then here's some of the armor too with the red again on the abs and the black and some more red around the sides. A lot of gray, silver and a little bit of gold trim as well. And you can even feel the different textures on the thighs here versus the uh, pads. Um, this seems to more be like the under suit or the under armor and then the actual armor plating here. Coming back up to the shoulders, you can see, and then the uh, the actual wrist, um, not sure what to call these, like wrist knives or wrist horn spikes, whatever you want to call them. And again with the armor, different armor plating here. These horns are kind of softer rubber, not too much, you know, you can't really move them, but you know, just be careful you don't get them caught on something. And also on the wrist here. It is a softer rubber, so you can move it. You don't have to worry about this getting stuck anywhere. And then the only other accessory on this figure besides the belt are these canisters or magazine holsters here. Not quite sure what these are for. Um, maybe for the grappling gun, but that's really all else you can see, and it's also on this side. So, And then the knees down here and the shins and the feet. Again, really nice paint application, just incredible how they're able to capture the glossy of the red and the gloss black, um, the different layers here, you can feel the bat symbol actually a different layer than all these, and it's not that it's all just painted different, so it look, gives it the look of having different layers. If you actually feel it, it's all, you know, a layer on top of a layer on top of a layer. And then I'll go into the cape which is also really cool, gives it the very gothic bat look. Um, and that's also not the paint app, that's the actual texture of the capes when you feel it. It's still very stringy. Um, sorry about that everyone, my camera died, so just gonna pick up right where I left off. So back into the cape, like I said, the very stringy, gothic feel to it. Really nice, really nice how they made it. And it is also soft of rubber, so when you do move it for the articulated points, you don't have to worry about it breaking or snapping. And the actual articulation, it's kind of hard to see, but under this top part of the cape, there's a joint that connects these two and lets you split them apart and move them back and forth. And then more of the red, as I can, as I said earlier with the light, how it reflects and... And then here at the bottom, not every end of the cape, but I think one, two, three, four of them have these what seem to be grappling hooks. Um, really cool. Not quite sure if any of the Batman comics had these on the capes, but I do know Play, Play Arts made these variants and these renditions on the figures. So, you know, I can just get this guy to stand. There we go. All right, so here is the review for the Square Enix Play Arts Kai Red Variant Batman. Hope you guys all enjoyed, and hope you all found this figure to be a very unique, very intricate, and extraordinary figure. And for all you Batman fans, I highly, highly recommend it. And I'll have a full photo gallery up, too, as well, with the review. All right, see you everyone later.